pack. I love this game. 30 giants from all around the globe, this time in the Southeast Asian country of the Philippines. Here to claim the title won last year by Great Britain's Eddie Hall. The title of World's Strongest Man. What a feeling, winning the World's Strongest Man. I dreamt of that title as a kid. Back at school, it wasn't who's the smartest, who's the fastest, or who's the hardest. It was always who's the strongest. And to be out here at World's Strongest Man to find out who the alpha is, it's, it's the best sport on the planet by a mile. This year, one of the most intense in the 41-year history of the competition, filled with emotion, <laughs> transcendence, drama, <sighs> and celebration. No, Athletes with one motto, go hard or go home. Today begins Group 1's battle to the finish. Six mind-blowing feats of strength. An exhaustive test. Only the strongest will survive. The Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man kicks off next. The Philippines is known for its teeming megacities, its welcoming and kind people, their many rich cultures, and of course, their beautiful islands, over 7,400 in total. And it's Samal Island, one of its most picturesque paradise personified. Brent Stover alongside Aaron Taylor here at Pearl Farm Beach Resort in the province of Davao del Norte. The Philippines, the proud host of the 41st edition of the World's Strongest Man. And coming into the competition, Aaron, much of the conversation revolves around the big man from Iceland. It's Hathor Julius Bjornsson. Yeah, no doubt, Brent. Hathor is in the best shape of his career with results to back that up. He won the Arnold Strongman Classic and then won his fourth title as Europe's Strongest Man. Now, of course, the story with Hathor is he's been knocking on the door of this championship since 2012, making the podium in all six years since. The most podium appearances by any competitor in the history of this sport without winning a title. So the question is, can Hathor finally break through? He gets underway here in group number one in the qualifying round, and his challengers include some world's strongest man veterans. Matyash Belshuk of Slovenia and Lawrence Shali of Great Britain also, Paymon Mahi Rapport here of Iran and Rob Kearney of the U.S., both competing here for just the second time and making his world's strongest man debut, Marius Lalas from Lithuania. So let's get you out to the first event of this year's competition, the Load and Carry. And that event over in Central Manila's Rizzo Park, a truly brutal one. It'll test the athlete's strength and athleticism as they carry two 330-pound sacks to a platform at the end of a 12-meter course well, they'll have to quickly pull themselves together and get a grip on a 660-pound farmer's walk apparatus. Three of the six athletes of Group 1 make their way to the start line. Hear now a little bit more about them in our Tachi Palace Power Profiles. Matyaj Belsak, Slovenia. I'm happy to be here. It's still something special because all 30 guys are here on one time, on this one weekend. All groups are really hard there. This year, um, they, we don't really have bad and good strongmen. They are just good and very good. So we have Haftor in our group. So the first place is already gone if not something special happened. And we just fight for the second place. Marius Lalas, Lithuania. That's my first World's Strongest Man and qualified second year in a row, but last year I got injury. So at this stage, for the World's Strongest Man, I had only five months to train. So I don't feel that comfortable on these events as I did before. Honestly, I don't think about final now. I'm focusing on heat because that's the most important for me. I won't gonna save any bit of energy what's left in me. I just do my best. I'm here to smash any event. 
من ماه ریپور ایران yeah! امسال سال دومیه که در دولی اسم هستم تجربه دارم از سال قبل سال قبل با یه اختلاف کوچیکی به فینال را پیدا نکردم حتما فینال خواهم رفت و از اسم ایران دفاع خواهم کرد خیلی خوشحالم که با خوبای دنیا دارم رقابت میکنم و امیدوارم که سربارند هم مسابقه بیان بیرون و مسابقه خوبی رو بدم Mahe Rapport here placed third in his group in 2017 and he's out for vengeance off to a fast start in the first event. He's looking to outdo that third place performance with how quickly he's starting here. You see Belshuk getting to the platform second and at the top of the screen Lawless using an interesting vertical carry technique. Hafthor is obviously in this group as well. He'll be in the next heat and you heard Belshuk say in the intros there that He's going to get first. It's basically a battle for second in this group. Well, it's a battle for second in this heat right here. Is Mahi Rapport here looking solid and strong, but a costly drop there. He's got to get the front of those over the edge of the finish line to stop the time. He's almost there and does it. But now you wonder, though, if that opened up the door for somebody else in the next heat to win the overall event. Mahi Rapport here is able to rip off his shirt after taking his heat here. And Belshuk, slow and steady, wins the race for him, finally getting across with an impressive time. Lawless really struggling in that far lane, only able to get one sack up. And he's going to tap out after doing that. 36.95, setting the pace with a heat one win is Paymon Mahi Report here. Mahi Rapport here was in control from start to finish. Just a great effort that he has to feel proud about starting off in this competition. Now let's take a look at the next group of athletes who are gearing up for the load and carry in our Tachi Palace Power Profiles. Lawrence Shatley, Great Britain. This is my 10th World Strongest Man, so I'm really proud of just being here that many times. For me, it's a huge achievement. You do need to be a little bit insane to do this because you're putting your body through extreme discomfort continually. <laughs> I'm quite good at staying quite relaxed before an event and then just switching on when it's time to kind of releasing that inner beast, if you like. With the right events, I believe I'm still capable of beating anyone. Rob Kearney, United States. World's Strongest Man is the beast of a competition. And coming in your first year, it's super intimidating because me being a younger guy, you know, I'm competing against guys that I've watched on TV for years. And now getting one year under my belt, kind of knowing how the competition runs a little bit better. Definitely have a different swagger about me this year, a little bit more confidence. You know, I'm ready definitely to put on a better show this year than I did last year. When I look at the mirror, I don't see <laughs> a top 30 strong man. I just see Rob Kearney. So like to be on this stage and competing with these guys, it's a dream come true. Coming out, you know, back in 2014 and then the whole piece about me being the only openly gay pro strongman was aired. I was just flooded with messages from people all over the world saying that, you know, I was giving them the courage to come out. I'm such an inspiration to them. I never in a million years thought that I would be that person. To hear that and to see that, it's been amazing. Half the winners Bjorsson, Iceland. It's been a long journey. Each year has been a battle. Six podiums, three times third and three times second. What keeps me mostly motivated, you know, is wanting to present my family, friends. I don't want to let them down. I've competed in uh, two big competitions this year, won both of them. So I'm looking forward to this year's World Strongest Man, and I can definitely say I am in my best shape of my life right now. Half Thor's eighth appearance. He's been on the podium six times. He's yet to win it, and we'll see if 2018 is finally Half Thor's year. Half Thor being as tall as he is is a real advantage, not only to drop the sacks instead of having to lift them up on the platforms like the other competitors, but he's also got longer arms, which makes it really easy for him to grab onto these sacks, where some of the other competitors with shorter arms are really struggling, like at the top we see with Rob Kearney also using that vertical carry technique. And now he drops it. Now, here's the deal. Half Thor, the time to beat is 36.95. He's going to win the heat. Can he win the event? You bet. No bobbles on the stretch run for Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. 
and he wins event one for group one. And taking second in this heat is Lawrence Shalley in that middle lane. And Rob Kearney in the far lane had a battle there. And the winner, Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. So Half Thor Julius Bjornsson wins the load and carry in a time of 35.13. Half Thor was so smooth throughout this competition. Look how he's stabilizing the carry frame as it rocks back and forth, those big size 16 shoes gliding across the finish line. Jenny Dell is with Half Thor. Thor, back at it, yeah. your eighth world strongest man. How important was it to come out on top here at this first event? It's very important to come in and uh, show uh, good strength, finishing strong, first event. It's always, uh, uh, always the plan. I'm very happy with the first event. How did you prepare differently this year than years past? It's pretty similar, but this year I haven't been uh, acting as much or taking more. I've been uh, putting more work in the gym and staying more home. More focused on World Strongest Man. Congratulations on a great first event, Thor. Thanks so much. Thor out of the gate strong. Heyman Mahirapur here of Iran takes second. Great Britain's Lawrence Sholley in his 10th World Strongest Man appearance in third. Back over to Jenny. After the break, the circle of strength. The strongman will lift this 660 pound tricycle up and in a circular rotation. Whoever goes the furthest wins. So why a tricycle? Well, this motorbike and sidecar are a popular mode of transportation here in the Philippines. We'll be riding into event number two, up next at the Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man. Welcome back to the 2018 Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man in the beautiful country of the Philippines. Up next, the competition continues in Rizzle Park for our second event, the Circle of Strength. Well, Brent, we all like to take a walk in the park, but none of us do it carrying a 660 pound motorcycle and sidecar. The athletes will walk around in a circle until they can't anymore. Dropping the apparatus ends the attempt. Whoever carries it the farthest wins. Two athletes have already competed. Marius Lalas of Lithuania completed a 572 degree rotation. Rob Kearney with a 351 degree rotation. Slovenia. Four athletes remain. Matthias this is Matias Belsha. <laughs> and that is one of the best all time. Four time World Strongest Man champ, Magnus Vermagnuson. Belshuk, a hospitality manager at his parents' restaurant in Slovenia, made the final once back in 2016, came in ninth. Well, he's sewing some hospitality to this motorcycle and sidecar as he carries it around in the circle, Brent. This is just like carrying a vending machine. Can you imagine the weight? You need your feet to provide the power, but your upper body has to be able to stabilize and hold on to that 660-pound weight. A cartoonish event. As soon as he drops it, it's done. But he doesn't appear to be doing that anytime soon. 572 is the... Distance to beat, he comes up short at 529. Nevertheless, very impressive Ladies from Matias Belshuk of Slovenia, currently in second. Belshuk just has tremendously balanced power. You can see the focus and determination there. The stabilization of the apparatus really is a key differentiator here, but Belshuk was impressive. From Great Britain. All right, up Lawrence next, Great Britain's Shelley. Lawrence Shalley. Yeah. Seeking his sixth finals appearance. His best finish in a final was fourth back in 2011. Interested to see how Chale does here. He's more of a static lifter, so these events that require him to move aren't necessarily his strong suit. Looks like it's getting heavy there on him, Brent. <laughs> Not quite the same rhythm as we saw from Belshuk, and he settles for 233 degrees which puts Chale into fourth place. It's always interesting to see how these guys respond. Foot speed to me is an indicator of how comfortable the strongmen are under the weight of the apparatus. Those short choppy steps by Chale were telling on him and his results spoke for themselves. So up next, it's Iran's Payman Mahirapur here. 
He was second place in the opening event, the load and carry. Almost knocked off Thor, but settled for second. Mahi Rapport here digging deep. Whoa. Uh-oh. Boy, this is, I think we both reacted the same. Not expecting that, 90 degrees, and obviously comes up short here. Not sure what happened, Aaron, but that puts him in fifth. I'm not sure either, Brent. He had an impressive start with the load and carry and a great start here. Then all of a sudden he just went to take a step and it looked like his leg gave out. That'll be a story going forward, obviously. We hope for the best for him. From Iceland. Meantime, off to a roaring Julius start is Iceland's half floor, Julius Bjornsson. Again, he won Europe's strongest man. And the Arnolds as well here in 2018. He's going for the trifecta. These sorts of events tend to favor the taller competitors, half door 6-9. The fulcrum creates a higher pivot point the taller you are, so it actually weighs a little bit less. And look at the steady feet of half door. He looks strong here. 572 degrees. That is the mark to beat. And he looks well on his way. Now he's starting to wobble a little bit. He's starting to feel it. He's going to have to dig deep here, keep his breath going. He's looking good, Brent. Absolutely. He won it a full 40 degrees ahead of second place. And Thor off to a great Ladies start. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Man, Half Thor's making it look easy. Looks like he's asleep at the wheel there, Brent. <laughs> But he wasn't sleeping on his results. Just another impressive start by the Icelandic giant. Here's Jenny. Thor, how much of an advantage was it going last in that competition? It's, uh, it's very important to go last in every event so you know exactly what you have to do. So winning the first event was always the plan. So we could see what other guys would do in this event. And uh, the plan worked out. It looked like you had more in you. Could you have kept going if you needed to? If I needed to, definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Iceland's half throw Julius Bjornsson won his second straight event. Marius Lalas of Lithuania made his mark in the circle of strength. He was second. Matias Belshek of Slovenia, top half of the board, coming in third. That second win secures half Thor. The top of the leaderboard with a five-point lead above second with 12 points. Belshuk of Slovenia holding on to the second spot and a three-way tie for third. With two straight wins, can Iceland's half Thor Julius Bjornsson continue his dominance, even against one of the most grueling of strongman tasks, the squat lift. When we return to the Tachi Palace, world's strongest man presented by Rogue. Welcome back to the Philippines here in Manila at the iconic Coconut Palace. Let's see how our athletes took on their third event, the squat lift. Ladies and gentlemen, our first competitor in group run representing Iran, Heyman Mahari here. You have to wait for the down signal. Wait for the battle to hit. And then just go for it. You're squatting down and trying to come back up as fast as possible. They take the time, but only on the last cags. Lawrence Shelley. Yeah. I've used that machine with um, 340 kilos of reps before, and I've done 13 reps with that weight before. You know, I felt like I could have repped out that end weight for a fair few more reps. Lawrence Shelley! Rob Kearney! That last rep, I was just so proud of him. Finishing that grinding moment, especially hearing everyone like cheer for him, <laughs> screaming so loud, my throat's bleeding. 
It was worth it. Definitely helped me hit all seven in a group that I need to get all seven. Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson. The first time I've done this kind of squat before with the barrels. My static strength has been improving a lot the recent years. Especially after I uh, teamed up with my uh, coach Sebastian Orup. Yes, yes! People saw it today, definitely. Yeah! Yeah! Too light, way too light. Well, we're here to find out who's the strongest. I honestly don't believe we found out who had the strongest legs then in, in that event. All of us did seven reps. I'm a bit disappointed with third place, to be honest, because I believe I'm at least the second best squatter in the group. And I'm sure Belsack believes he's the third best squatter in the group, but it is what it is. We'll move on to the next event now. The winner of group one in the squat lift, half door, Julius Bjornsson. So far, three wins out of three events. So I can't complain. I'm uh, sitting in a comfortable lead right now. Yeah, well, two uh, more three events more. In, the, in the heats. Then we have three, three days rest. Then we have two days in the finals. All six athletes were able to complete seven reps. Bjornsson led the group, completing them fastest in 27.50. Lalas got second in a time of 28.92. Shale in third in 29.77. Hafthor maintains his first place position, now seven points ahead of second. Lalas manages to take a one-point lead above Matias Belshuk for second. Belshuk down in third at 10 points, tied with Shale. It's essential to the Philippines, the jeepney, a relic of World War II. Here it's become one of the most popular modes of transportation. And our strongmen will take these on in the arm over arm when we come back to the Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man, presented by Rogue. We are back in the Philippines capital city of Manila to take on the fourth event of the qualifying rounds here at the Carino Grandstand, and it's the arm over arm. It's called the arm over arm, but it's really a punishing test of overall body strength as the athletes will have to pull a couple of jeepneys weighing 15,000 pounds, and they must remain seated throughout the pull. And it's 25 meters the distance. Rob Kearney, a short time ago, the United States was able to get it 15.87 meters. A nice showing, but you can tell by the look on his face and the sweat on his head just how taxing this event can be. And he reached the time limit as the whistle blew. 15.87 for the American. Up next to the arm over arm, Paymon Mahi Rapor here of Iran, seeking his first final. He's a powerlifting and bodybuilding coach, which obviously fits nicely with world's strongest man, and here he goes. I always feel like the taller competitors have an advantage here, Brent, because they can take longer strides. You see Paymon with a breakneck pace here, getting everything he can to get these jeepneys on the go, getting them past their initial inertia is important here. I'm just thinking the, the effect on those hamstrings when you have your feet up against that board like that, trying to create momentum. It's more about the quads, but you're right. It involves every major muscle group here, but not only from a test of strength standpoint, but also your cardiovascular conditioning plays a role here as well, as you see Paymon digging deep for everything he's got. The time limit is one minute, so he's still got some time to work and doing one heck of a job, Mahi Rapor here, but now running out of gas. Mahe Rapor here with that jeepney in tow. Still trying to get a few more inches and a heck of an effort just short of the course, but very pleased certainly with his effort as you can see. And even more impressive considering that he went down in the circle of strength. He's got to be happy about that result. So he goes into the lead with a distance of 23.62 just shy of completing the course. Just an impressive overall performance by Mahi Rapor here, looking to the heavens for inspiration, Brent, and seemingly getting it. 
So up next, it's Matias Belshuk of Slovenia. Tied for third. After three events, he trains three hours per day. Says he really admires, in particular, Brian Shaw and the legendary Bill Kazmaier. The Belshek, not the tallest of competitors, at a little bit of a disadvantage. He's got very powerful legs, but he can't take as long as strides. And I'm noticing he's pulling off center, kind of leaning towards his right there. That's going to overtax the muscles on that side of the body. He's going to have to compensate for that at some point here. 23.62 was the distance pulled by Mahi Rapor here, so that is the number to beat. So important to have your body work in conjunction. It has to activate and be in sync, starting the drive with your legs, and then your arms and upper back take over. And you can see Belshuk really feeling the weight of that 15,000 pounds. Even changing his grip a little bit, putting that rope over his left wrist. But it just doesn't appear to be happening right now for Matias Belshuk as he hits the time limit. Give it up for Matias Belshuk. And you can tell he's a little bit disappointed and perplexed, maybe more than anything, with that event. He does go into second with a distance of 1750. Yeah, the 15,000 pounds eventually took its toll on the powerful Slovenian. The rope and the standing in this event slowly started slipping through his fingertips. So with none of the athletes yet able to finish the grueling 25 meter arm over arm course, will it be a shoe in for another Bjornsson win? Find out when we return to the Tachi Palace, World's Strongest Man presented by Rogue. Welcome back to the Philippines, where we take a look back at the first three athletes' results in the arm over arm. None of the athletes able to finish the 25-meter course, but Paymon Mahi Rapport here for Ron managed to pull for a distance of 23.62. He's got the lead. Lawrence Chale tied for third after three events. He has 10 points going into this event. Interested to see how Chale does here, Brent. He's such a powerful static lifter meaning he's got the lower and upper body strength necessary to pull these two jeepneys, but does he have the conditioning necessary to finish well here? It's interesting, Aaron, you bring that up because not every one of these guys has created the same, clearly. Not every event is created the same. So you got to find that happy medium when you're coming up with the right events for each of these guys. And Chalet really seems to shine in the events where he can use his raw static power but we're more than halfway home here, and Chale already looking like he's running out of gas. 2016 Europe's Strongest Man, a win which revitalized his career. He's certainly not going to complete the course, but every inch, every meter counts. Final 10 seconds of the time limit. He's getting down to the one-leg technique here. You love his competitiveness as he runs out of time. And these guys understand, again, every second and every bit counts here. And that does give him a second with that effort of 18.10. He didn't give up at the end, and the look on his face confirms that that 15,000 pounds is as painful as you would guess. But he gave it all to the very end, and it paid off. That's a perfect example of, you know, it wasn't the prettiest of things. He never really had a good rhythm, but still enough to get into second. And now it's Marius Lalas, who's currently second overall in the group after three events, and he's off and going. The fitness instructor, currently living in Ireland, and his brother, of course, Vitotis Lalas, took second place in the World's Strongest Man back in 2012. Yeah, and after a slow start in the loading race, he's done a nice job fighting his way back and looking strong here initially. 18.10 meters is currently second place. That was Chalet moments ago. 23.62 looks doubtful. That's a lead. The mark set by Mahi Rapport here. He started out of the gate so quickly. I wondered if he was going to be able to keep up that pace. This is an event where slow and steady can win the race. Guys that 
put too much energy into it on the front end, really struggle here on the back end where it's needed most. Running out of time, final five seconds now. Down to two, one, and there it is for Lawless. Ladies and gentlemen, once again. Gaining some blisters on those Lawless. hands. And he is completely out of gas. So Lawless, again though, 1857, just edging out Chalet, and that puts him in second place. Yeah, it was a strong showing that Lawless was happy with for despite the rapid pace, which at times led him to misgrab the rope and take his legs effectively out of it. Right there, that miss, I think, is secondary to his inexperience. All right, so now the main event. The leader after three events, and he has looked sharp so far. Out for revenge is Iceland's half Thor, Julius Bjornsson. Half Thor's looked so strong coming into this competition and through the first couple of events has looked good as well. This is something with those big, powerful arms, legs, and upper back. I would expect him to do well here. But it looks like he's kind of slowing down, and he's not even to the halfway point from a timing standpoint. And really, for the first time, Aaron, at the 2018 World's Strongest Man, we're seeing that he is not invincible. Yeah, you can tell he's gassed out. It's like those jeepneys have flat tires. He doesn't have much left in him here. And he checks out. Mahi Rapport here will be the event winner, 23-62. And half the wow. will have to settle for six in the arm over arm. Yeah, Hathor just never looked comfortable here. He legitimately struggled, but he came into this event with a huge seven point lead. So it's not the end of the world that he didn't do well here, but still it's rare to see a giant like this tap out. And at that point, why even exert any more energy? So Paymon Mahiripur here of Iran, impressive. Wins the group in 23.62 meters in just his second World's Strongest Man appearance. Half Thor, who had a seven point lead over the rest of the group, places sixth in the arm over arm. He's still at the top of the leaderboard. So Bjornsson still maintains a lead over second place Lalas. Remember, the leader after five events automatically qualifies for the final second and third after battle it out in the stones for the second spot. Here's Jenny. Coming up next at the Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man, the overhead press. Our athletes will lift this log from these pads to their shoulders, extending their arms completely overhead, then back down to the pads again as many times as possible in 60 seconds. But at a weight of 355 pounds, which strongman will press his way into the finals? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back. We are at Bonifacio Global City here in Manila, where Group 1 will face off in their fifth event of the qualifying round, the Overhead Press. Yeah, Brent, we're finally back to some head-to-head -head competition where the athletes will clean and press a 355-pound log overhead. The most reps in 60 seconds wins. First up, Matias Belshuk of Slovenia. Matias Belshuk. Fifth place after four events, but he's only three points out of second place. He's on the left. On the right is Rob Kearney of the United States. He's in sixth. In this his second appearance at the world's strongest man. Now both of these competitors on the shorter side, Belshuk is 6'1, Kearney is 5'9. The shorter arms really help in this event. Gives you a little bit more leverage. You don't have to lift the log quite as high. Belshuk looking really, really good through his first three reps. Absolutely, he's up to a really good start. Kearney struggling a bit on the right, has one rep so far, he's able to lock that out for his second. Look, using a little split jerk stance there, you can tell he's getting tired, but Belshuk, look how smooth he is. You see that subtle little drop there with his hips, he's using the explosion through his mid-region to be able to lift that weight up and then uses his arms, those powerful arms, to lock it out. Man, powerful indeed, adjusts the belt here to take a breath after his sixth rep. Kearney finding momentum there, gets his fourth. Belshuk locking it out. 
And Kearney unexpectedly struggling considering he tied for first in the log lift in his group a year ago. Ladies and gentlemen, Mateusz Belshak. So Belshak goes into the lead and that's gonna be a nice mark that he's put out there. The man from Slovenia gets seven reps. And the American Rob Kearney goes into second place with four. Brent, this was a great example of the different techniques that strong men use. You got to use what you got. Rob Kearney at 5'9", the shortest competitor in this competition using the split jerk technique. But then Belshuk at 6'1", doing the traditional clean and press. That little explosive vertical movement from his hips making the difference. Representing Great Britain, Lawrence Shelley. Yeah! Next head-to-head yeah! -head is Lawrence Shelley of Great Britain, tied for third after four Representing events. Representing Iran. He's on the Amen. left. This guy's been impressive. Paymon Mahi Rapport here of Iran. Two points out of second place. He is tied for third at the moment. I always feel like these head-to-head -head helps out competitors because you got that guy to go against, even though you're going against the entire group. There's no question. It's immediate motivation. You know what you personally have to do, but you also know what the guy next to you needs to do. So having almost kind of that rabbit effect is really helpful for these guys. They both need to beat seven reps, and that's an impressive mark put up by Belshuk early in this event. And you see Mahir Rapport here there getting the weight up, but really struggling to stabilize it. I don't know how many more reps he's got in him as we see Shale struggling underneath the weight of that log as well. Shale able to lock it out for his fifth. The number to beat is seven. Mahir Rapport here. Is it three so far, but really fighting it. And now he goes down. Now this is the second time in the competition we see him holding that right leg. You hope he's okay, and Shale, using that experience, just grinding it out, getting a sixth rep. Right at the end of the time limit, comes up just short, but he goes into second with six reps. Impressive from the man from Great Britain. But Mahi Rapur here has been really good in two events, but then he's come up with what appears to be a right leg injury in the other two events. Yeah, keep your eye on that right leg there as he starts to press up, it buckles inward. And I just don't know how many more of those near misses you can have under these sorts of weights as we see Shale here lock this thing out with a look of satisfaction. While his fellow competitor had to be treated immediately with a bag of ice. And now it is the man who plays the mountain in Game of Thrones. The leader after four events, half Lord Julius Bjornsson. Marius Lawless. And Lithuania's Marius Lawless in second place after four events in his first appearance here at the world's strongest man. Down. Lawless looking extremely smooth with his first rep. Bjornsson, on the other hand, struggling to find his balance and lock out that 355-pound log. Belshuk has set the number to beat. This is the final pairing here in this event. The number to beat is seven reps. Lawless looking extremely smooth with his three reps. You wonder how long he can keep this up. Half Thor, look at that pressing power, Brent. There's virtually no movement through his hips. We just saw Belshuk being very efficient with that hip explosion, but Half Thor's upper body so strong, he just lifts that 355 pound log like it's nothing. Seven the number to beat. Lawless at five, Bjornsson now at five as he falls backwards after that rep. You know what's interesting to me is he's lifting the log overhead effortlessly as we see Lawless tap out after five. But Hafthor struggling to stabilize it. The whistle blows. He won't get credit for that last lift, but he gets five pretty good ones. Lawless tied for third, and you mentioned that. Pretty good ones. Pretty good indeed because it's good enough to advance Hafthor Julius Bjornsson into the final as he finishes tied for third in this event. This is the best shape that hathor has been in coming into this competition that I've seen. He looks determined and focused, and now he's headed to the final to prove he's got what it takes. Hathor has now qualified for the final all eight times that he's competed in the world's strongest man. The man from Iceland, the mountain from Game of Thrones, qualifies for the final and gets to sit out the sixth event here in the group stage. So Matias Belshuk, the group one winner in the overhead press. Lawrence Chalet places second. 
And Half Thor ties for third in the event with Lawless, each with five reps, but it's enough to get Half Thor through to the final. So Half Thor heads to the finals, 22 and a half points, and now Lawless and Belshuk in second and third battle it out for the second spot in the final. And with a right knee ligament injury, Paimon Mahirapur here forced to withdraw. It's an epic battle, winner take all, fight to the finish between Belshuk and Lawless. Who will prevail and secure a spot in the 2018 Tachi Palace World Strongest Man Final? The Atlas Stone Showdown is next. Welcome back to Bonifacio Global City in the Philippines. Group one takes on the final event of the qualifiers, the Atlas Stones. With five stones ranging from 330 to 440 pounds needing to be moved from the ground up to the platforms, it'll be a challenge of overall body strength. A lot of weight with a lot on the line. Winner takes all and moves on to the final. These are the two men in Slovenia, second and third so far. Belshuk. Belshuk seeking his second World's Strongest Man final. He was in the final in 2016. Marius First World's Lola. Strongest Man appearance from Arius Lawless. Hathor Julius Bjornsson has already advanced to the final out of this group. The winner between these two men in the Atlas Stones gets the second spot in the final from group one. This is a lot of pressure for Lawless. This is his first appearance in this competition. He drops the first 330 pound stone, doesn't even have it on the platform, and Belshuk a clear stone ahead of him. And now the 350 pound stone, the third one for Belshuk, and he has found a beautiful rhythm. If he doesn't bobble, it appears that he will be the man to advance. And he's only six foot one, so these platforms, a little bit more challenge for him, Brent. Really smooth so far, but to your point, he cannot make a mistake here. The final is on the line. 440 pound stone, Matias Belshuk of Slovenia advances to the final as he beats Lawless head to head in the Atlas Stones. You see the look of disappointment on Lawless's face. Great effort, but it was Belshuk who stepped up, used his power and experience to move on to the final. Belshuk was just so smooth from start to finish especially on those first four stones. But it was the fifth one, the one that sent him to the final, where he finally let the emotions fly. Jenny Dell is with Belshuk. What does it mean for you to make your second World's Strongest Man final? I mean here, the World's Strongest Man is special because all 30 best guys from here compete in one week. So you have all the best on one time, on one place. So it's coming to the finals means that you're, you're the top of the 10 in the year and it's great. I missed the finals last year with a hard battle and now I'm even, even more, more happier to come in the finals. You had a great end to 2017. How have you carried on that momentum to 2018? I mean, you always need to improve. Slovenia is not a big country with strong men. You need to do the most of the things your own. But if you love, if you love the sport, you can do it. Great job. Congratulations. We'll see you in the final. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bjornsson of Iceland and Belshuk of Slovenia take the top two seats to move on to the World's Strongest Man final. Bjornsson makes his eighth trip to the final. Belshuk, his second appearance after falling just short in 2017. Still to come on this season of the Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man, four more groups take on some of the most harrowing, mind-blowing, and excruciating tasks the sport has to offer. Returning to the world's stage, the American and four-time champion Brian Shaw, eager to finally earn his fifth title. Another four-time champion from Lithuania, Zadrunas Zaviskis. And many more veterans and rookies all vying for this year's number one spot on the podium. Continue watching the drama unfold and tune in to CBS Sports Network for your front row seat to this year's World's Strongest Man Championship. For Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell, and our entire CBS crew, I'm Brent Stover. In association with IMG Original Content, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports.